Well, amen. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. Come on, get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God. Come on, God's been good to you. Amen, amen. Well, God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion. We're so happy to see you on this Super Bowl Sunday. Today, it's a Super Sunday that we're celebrating today, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Well, how many of you know that all things are possible with our God? Does anybody know that? All things are possible with God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what's ahead. It doesn't matter what you're asking and believing for. All things, all things, all things are possible with our God. There's a scripture I want to share with you in Psalms. It says this, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with his benefits. I believe that God has a blessing for you today. Focus on your God. Focus on what he has to offer, not what your circumstances have to offer you. Because I believe that God has new mercies every day, new mercies every morning for you. And I believe that and declare today that God is going to do a new thing in your life today. I believe that God's got a blessing for you today. I, got, I believe that God's going to open some doors today. I believe that God's going to do a miracle. How many are believing for something today? I said in the beginning, all things are possible with our God, the God that we serve. So today we're going to focus on our God. We're going to focus on his power. We're going to not look around, but we're going to look up and look at him and worship his name and focus on him. We thank you for everyone that's in our parking lot, all our parking lot praisers and everyone viewing online. Let's welcome everybody that's viewing online and all of our parking lot praisers today. We're glad to have everyone with us. We're believing and declaring that God is going to do something great. Everyone, if you could just lift up your hands to the heavenlies all around the sanctuary today, in your car right now, if you could lift up your hands to the heavenlies at home, wherever you are right now as we go to God, God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this moment we have with you, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being in your presence right now, Father. We know that there is power in your presence, Father, Lord. There's healing in your presence. There's peace in your presence, Lord. There's miracles in your presence, Father, Lord. We are in the presence of the Most High God, Father, Lord. And we're grateful, Lord, just to be in your presence, Father, Lord. Be with us today, Lord, on this day, Lord. Be with the faithful people of God that have come out, Lord, today, Father, Lord. Hear their prayers, Lord. Hear their cries, Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we come to you today, Lord. We are an expectation, Lord, of the great, Lord, because you are a great God, Lord. All things are possible in you, Father, Lord. And we're believing in the impossible on this day, Lord. Come into this place, Lord. Let us hear your, hear your words, Lord. Let us feel your power and your presence all throughout this place, Lord. Flow freely, Lord. Flow freely, Lord. We want to hear and be blessed by you. We are praying and believing in great things, Lord, on this day. We pray all these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team leads us. Come on, people, now. All the trouble you've been having this year, last year, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But after this, yeah. it's going to be all right. Listen, there will be glory. There will be glory after this. And there will be victory. There will be victory after this. God will turn it around. struggling, but it's going to be all right. Listen, there will be glory. There will be glory after this. Yes. And there will be victory. There will be victory after this. You see, God will turn. God will turn it around. He'll bring you out. He will bring you out. Specializes. Specializes. 
sing this, y'all. Yeah, because we've been going through a lot of things. Yeah, but listen.
give God some praise in the house. Why don't you stand on your feet to give God the best praise in the house today? God is good and he's good all the time and all the time. God is good. Why don't you just turn to someone and wave at him as if you're saying, I want to run over. I want the Lord to fill my cup and I want him to let it run over. Amen. As you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to be re we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Pick it up just a little bit. Amen. God is good and he's good all the time. Here we are in the house of God on a good Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Amen. We're going to kick off with praise first. And then we're going to see the kickoff at 630 tonight. Amen. I don't know who's going to win, but I know who's already won. And his name is Jesus. Have I got a witness in the house? Anytime he kicks me through my trials and tribulations, my troubles, my heartaches and pain, then I know that he is the winner of every Super Bowl in, in the universe. And so I'm grateful to God that you're here today to worship him today. And guess what? Your team is going to win. Whoever that team is, your team is going to win. Amen. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor because he has brought you another week. He has brought you through, as the songwriter said, amazing grace through danger seen and unseen. And you need to give him some glory for that. You need to praise him. You need to thank him. That if you have a reasonable portion of health and strength, you are in your right mind. You need to thank God for that even today. Yes, thank God for your family right now. Thank God for the little things. Thank God for the fact that you drove up today in your car. You did not have to walk, didn't have to catch a bus. Thank God you had gas in your car. Start with small things, and you will discover that as you start with small things, God is going to lead you to the larger things, like grace and goodness and mercy that he gives you. New mercies, the songwriter said, every day flows from him. Could you pray for me and Mrs. Macon and Pastor Larry and Elodie and Pastor Dan and Bria and their children and our family right now. Could you ask God to just wrap his arms of protection around us? We're here again for two years. We've been every Sunday doing it here. Don't think it doesn't take a, its toll on us. It does. And then you need to thank God for this marvelous choir and musicians who have come here every Sunday for the last two years praising God. Even when there's nobody in here, they was in here thanking God. These are some great, great saints of God because they said they are going to trust in God through it all. Thank God for our nation. Thank God for our world. Thank God that this pandemic is doing what I said it was going to do the first Sunday of this year. There was going to be a shift in around the country. We're now experiencing a 65% decrease in this virus. Give God some praise. You better do better than that. Because the same God who pulls it down is the same God who can allow it to go back up. Have a God a witness in the house. We're getting ready to move into the new the new normal, if you will, coming back to church and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Now, on this Thursday, we're going to have a concert, as you might know. We're going to have the all-star concert here at the Mount Zion Church, and we're going to have some of the National Basketball Association players that are going to receive awards here. We were chosen as a church to host this great event and so it's going to be marvelous i don't know if you got your ticket online or not there's only limited seating as you know and it's going to be aired all across the uh, entire uh, city and so we want you to pray for our thursday evening uh, all-star game starts at eight o'clock seven o'clock doors will be open could you pray for that service because that would be one of the first service we will be having inside of the church during the week Amen. Come on, give God some praise that Mount Zion is on the move for Christ. Now, as you're praying for that, bow your heads and as you're praying for that, I'm still pushing vaccines. I'm still pushing vaccines. Those who are not ready to get the vaccine after two years, that's on you. And that's fine. You, you're where you're at. And I hope that somehow I can convince those people to move to where I think I am and the majority of pastors in the city is on getting vaccines still, even as this uh, this uh, Omicron virus is leaving us. They say another one may come on the scene, but we got protection already. And we still want our, our folk to get vaccinated. So every fourth Sunday 
in uh, this this uh, in in the month up until June, we're going to offer the vaccine to all who are eligible for the vaccine. That means children, senior, older people, middle-aged people, family, men. I'm so grateful to God that our men got vaccinated uh, this year. That would not have gotten vaccinated had we not made the appeal. And so I need you to pray for the fourth Sunday in this month in February. Uh, we're going to invite folk to go over next door as we did before and get vaccinated. If you know someone one who is not vaccinated and you can encourage them, I encourage you to encourage them to get vaccinated here at the church. If they offered that when I was getting vaccinated, I would have came over there, got vaccinated, and then sit down and praise God afterwards inside of the church. So I'm hoping that will happen in the next uh, couple of months. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment, this time. These folk who have come here to worship you in spirit and in truth, you said to us that we are called to be your disciples and to become your followers uh, of you. And so we're now following you, not just on Sunday, but every day that we wake up. God, you're so good, and we thank you for uh, creating a kind of house for us to which we now call the Father's house. Mount Zion is the Father's house because Father God uh, super rules and resides in this house. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who always strengthens us in times of troubles and in times of problems and situations. We thank you, God, for your spirit, the spirit that rules and guides and give us comfort even in the time of discomforts. Thank you, God, for all of the members who are here today. Now bless what we are about to continue doing, which is worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Give God another great big hand praise. Amen. Give our choir a great big hand praise. They did a marvelous work today. As you go to your seat, we're going to ask that our technician will put on our marvelous announcements and we want you to watch as you prepare to give back to God your 10%, your tithe, and your offering. You can't be God's giving no matter how much you try. He gives back to us in so many different ways. Amen. All of our student ministries are dismissed at this time. Kids K through six can exit to the right of the stage and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. During Black History Month, the NBA All-Star Gospel Celebration will hold their television award show and concert at our church on Thursday, February 17th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Gospel artists Kira Sheard, Molly Music, Maverick City, Angela Christie, and many more will be performing. NBA stars and legends will be in the building along with NBA chaplains representing teams from across the country. There is limited seating for this event, so call the church if you would like to attend. We are in this together, executing a strategy to fight for our families. This year, we want to see families owning homes, starting businesses, and growing. During this pandemic, there has been enemies over the home, like addiction, divorce, and mental health issues. We want to help people rebuild foundations. Join us as we explore our series entitled, Fighting the War for Your Family. We're creating our own Mount Zion Wall Street with kingdom business leaders. If you own a business or if you're interested in starting a business, we want you to sign up for this ministry. It will include trainings, online events, and resources. We will also highlight your business or vision so others can support you. Sign up in the foyer or visit our website. Are you in need of a healing? Visit our healing room located in the educational wing. You can come in one at a time or as a family. There are instructions on healing and deliverance in the room for you to follow. We are continuing our I Got Mine campaign by now offering COVID-19 vaccinations for the entire community on every fourth Sunday until June. We want to keep our community safe by helping others avoid sickness. 
Invite others on the Sundays between and after church services for free vaccinations in a private and isolated area in our Fine Arts and Restoration Center. We thank all who support the vision of Mount Zion. If you attend church, tithe, volunteer, support, and share who we are to others, you are a partner in all that we do. We strive to save souls, help people, strengthen our communities, and are one of the healthiest investments people can make. We're a legacy church, not just here for ourselves, but the future generation. We'll soon be releasing our 20-year vision. We look forward to a glorious future. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise as you stand on your feet. As we prepare to give back to God our tithe and our offering, we are grateful to God for all of you who have continued even through, through these tough times for the church in giving to God tithe and offering. We hope that you will have businesses will join us. And those of you who are in the uh, car, those of you who are looking at us online, we hope that you will sign up for our uh, business directory. That's what we're getting ready to put together. We want 100 businesses to be a part of that. And on Sunday, sometimes we're going to be sharing commercials about particular businesses. And we're going to be asking people to support certain businesses during that week or that month. And so if you have a business, take that card and fill it out, put it inside of the offering tray. And those of you who want a business, and you're going to claim it in the name of Jesus in advance. I preached some years ago that everybody should have at least one second business in today's world. And if you want a business, just start, give us that information and we're going to be putting that into a directory. We're gonna be pushing at least 100 businesses this year, so we want to empower you, amen? And then afterwards, we're gonna be pushing houses, houses. We wanna make sure young people don't leave out of our city, going to New York City and San Francisco and Atlanta, Georgia and Florida, but rather they will feel safe and and stand right here in the greater Cleveland community. So we're gonna be pushing that next. In the month of March, we're gonna be pushing the family series. And I know that there's one controversial subject on those family series that you can pick up in the back of the, uh, in the lo lobby of the church. There's one controversial subject. So you better be around when I start preaching that one. And you better pray real hard that we preach that one right, amen? We want to strengthen the family. Say, strengthen the family. Amen. Pastor Larry is coming at this time. Give Pastor Larry a great big hand. He preached his heart off this morning. Oh, my goodness. Let us read Malachi 3, 6 through 12. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Even from the days of your fathers. You've gone away from my ordinance have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. He say, wherein can we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye have cursed with the curse. Ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now in your wish, saith the Lord of hosts. I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will devour for your sake. And I will destroy the fruit of your ground. Thank you. And the Lord of hosts. Let's read 12 together. And, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thanking God for all that he's done. The Bible says, great is the Lord and mighty is his power. His understanding is infinite. Isn't it good to know that God understands what you need? He understands what's best for your life. So today as you give, give in, give in faith, knowing that God knows what's best for you. Reflect on the greatness and the power of God. The fact that you're alive today is simply because of the power of God. And know today, I want to proclaim right now that God is capable of doing anything so as we give in faith, we give because we know that God can do so many things seen and unseen for our lives that we can't do for ourselves. There's many witnesses here today of God's grace and God's mercy, but also the great things God has done. If God has done something great in your life, can somebody just say amen? Amen. If God has done something great in your life, somebody say hallelujah. 
hallelujah today. No task is too large. No task is too difficult. Heavenly Father, we lift you up. We magnify you today. We give today as a congregation, knowing and believing that all we have, all we'll ever be, is because of you today. We give, God, not grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, as the Bible says, knowing that you love a cheerful giver. Thank you, God, for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are here today, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. If you're out in the parking lot, the ushers are so graciously going to come and receive the tithe and offering. If you're online, make sure you go to mzov.org or go to our Givelify website and bless through giving. And thank you again for being with us. It is tithe and offering time in God's house. You make me oh, happy. You make me happy. You make me whole. You make me whole. You take the pain you away. Take the pain I'm away. So in love. So in love with you. You make me happy. You make me happy. You make me whole. You make me whole. You Give God a great big hand praise as you remain standing for a moment and whisper a word of prayer for me. Whisper a word of prayer for the message. There's something that you want to hear from God. You want God to speak to you. Would you speak to God on my behalf? Would you ask God to get all around me, in me? Would you ask God to move on the top of my heart and spirit? If you want to hear from God, you have to ask God. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Go after it, go after it, go after it, go after it, go after the power and presence and word of God today. And I declare to you, if you do that right now, then God will intervene. He will hide me behind his cross and you will see nothing but him. But you've got to ask him for that kind of revelation. What is it that you need to make it through this week? That you need to ask God to speak to the man of God so that the man of God can give to you the word of God. But not only give you the word of God, but to give you the word of God that has come through the spirit of God. That's what Sunday morning worship is about. It's about the spirit of God moving in this place so that you can feel him in your inside, in your cars, and even online. But you cannot feel him. You cannot feel the, all, all the wholeness of who he is unless you first give your life to him. You've got to ex accept the fact that you are a sinner, that he is a savior. And 
right now and even today, God is going to convict somebody. You're going to have a conviction on you today to either change the way you're going or to turn to the Lord in such a different kind of a way. What is it that God is trying to do? He is only trying to strengthen the relationship between you and him. And sometimes he has to do it through trials and tribulations and even pandemics. But other times he does it through blessings. All of a sudden you're blessed here and you're blessed there. You're blessed with a family. You're blessed with friends and you're blessed with a job. You're blessed with this, that, and the other. That's his way of trying to build the relationship between you and him. He loved you so much. He loved you so much that John said that he gave the best he had, which was himself. He came out of heaven himself and came down to earth. And he came down here to be killed for your behalf so that you will ever know that he loves you so much. He's not trying to play games with you. He is serious about that love. He is so serious that when Adam and Eve left the garden, the door was shut, but he wanted that door open. And what did he do? He sent his only begotten son to open back that door to everlasting life, to the tree of life, so that when you come down to the end of your journey, and even now, you will know that you have life and you have it more abundantly. That's what he has done. So now you've got to accept that and you know there will come a time when it's too late yes it will be bible says the day that you hear my voice harden not your heart for i stand at the door of your heart and i'm knocking i'm knocking i'm knocking i'm knocking i know you've been going through some stuff but i'm knocking and i'm standing there trying to get in and unfortunately you only have a time a window of time to let me in and so he says today harden not your heart Eternal God, our Father, we ask that you would bless this message, the hearers of your word, the proclaim of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand of praise as you go to your seat. Amen. As you turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 57, 15th chapter, verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says just one verse, and that's all I'm going to look at is one, one verse. Amen. And then we'll go home and get ready for our evening event. Amen. Here's what it says. Repeat after me in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Repeat after me. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's try it again. But thanks be unto God, which giveth our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't fight to the end. Fight to win. Say, neighbor, don't fight to the end. Say, neighbor, don't just fight to the end of the fight, but fight to win. You know, the other day I was reading in the sportsnews.com a very interesting article, and you might be interested in it today. It was entitled, Who Will Win the Super Bowl Tonight? Who Will Win the Super Bowl Tonight? tonight and it starts off like this and i'll read it to, to you it starts off like this it says the bingo the bingles that's my hometown cincinnati ohio great team only second to the browns amen somebody the bingles will face the rams in super bowl 58 56 kickoff at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time at the Rams' home field, SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. The game will be televised on NBC. Both teams pulled off impressive comebacks on conference championship this weekend. Cincinnati rallied from a 21-3 deficit to beat Kansas City 27-24 in overtime in the AFC 
championship game. The Rams rallied from a 17 to seven deficit to beat the 49ers 20 to 17 in the NFC championship game. Now this is just, the article says, the second Super Bowl matchup between quarterbacks who were selected number one overall in the NFL draft. And who are they? Joe Burrows, 2020, and Matthew Stanford, 2009. Both are looking for their first Super Bowl ring. The Bengals are making their third Super Bowl appearance and their first since the 1988 season. Cincinnati has rallied around Burrow, who led Cincinnati through the AFC playoffs with back-to-back -back road victories at Tennessee and Kansas City after a home victory over Las Vegas. Burrow is part of an exciting young cast that also included Pro Bowl selection Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, and Trey Henderson. Third-year coach Zach Taylor has a chance to lead the franchise to its first Super Bowl victory. The Rams are in the Super Bowl for the second time under fifth-year coach Sean McFay. The offseason trade and sent, uh, had, that sent Gerard Goff to Detroit for Stafford was a big all in a moment for Los Angeles. In season pickups, Von Miller and uh, y'all know this brother, Odell Beckman Jr. Beckham Jr. He just had a baby, y'all know, by his girlfriend. I'll leave that alone. But Odell Beckham Jr. have become Key contributors, wide receiver Cooper Coop and defensive tackle Aaron Donald are also at the top of a star-studded roster. And the question on the table is, who is going to win tonight's Super Bowl? Are there any Rams supporters in the house? Just a few. <laughs> Are there any Ram supporter out there in the cars? Not a horn. <laughs> Are there any Cincinnati supporters in the house? Let me hear you. Well, I know who is going to win. I already know. Is it Cincinnati? Is it the Rams, Daniel? I'll tell you who is going to win. It all depends on which team doesn't just fight to the end, but fight to win. I think that's who is going to win the game. Those the team that does not just fight to the end. You know, it's one thing when you fight to the end, but when you get to the end, you do not really fight to win. But in order to win this game, the team is going to have to fight to the end, but fight to win. The truth of the matter is, if Christians are going to win in this era, those who are followers of Jesus Christ, those who believe that they are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, who, who declare themselves to be a part of the way that the New Testament talks about, we're going to have to not only fight to the very end, but also fight to win. You see, to be a real Christian means that you are engaged in a battle. We used to sing a song in the yesterday, we are soldiers. How many of you remember that song? We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We've got to fight, although we might have to die, but we're going to hold up the blood-stained banner until we die. And we've got to understand that we have a real adversary whose aim is our destruction. 
Paul said every day we, we wake up in the morning, we're in a battle, good versus evil. He says every day that I wake up, I am battling with that which is good and that which is evil. And you need to understand that the enemy is really tough. The enemy will use any tactic, say tactic, strategy, say strategy, to cause you, the faithful, to lose heart and become wearied to the point that you welcome defeat and easily throw in the towel. Do you know any folk like that? Easily defeated and they're willing to just throw in the towel easily. But the great news for the believers, however, is this. We may have a real enemy, but we have an awesome advocate. Can I say it again? We do have a real enemy, but we have an awesome advocate. We do have a real enemy that started in the Garden of Eden. And you need to know that when you read that story about the devil or Satan, that's who he's really referred to as in the garden. It is Satan in the garden of Eden. It was no snake in the garden. Though it says serpent, it was no serpent. It was Satan disguised as a serpent. But I need to tell you that we also have a great advocate, and his name is Jesus. Have I got a witness on that in the house? Not only is his name Jesus, but he is the son of the living God. Our Christ is not just an ever-present God helping us to get to the end. He is, says the text, the Lord of hosts, which means that he has a mighty army beside him. You remember that time Satan said, well, if you say who you are, you are. When he was out there in the wilderness, the Bible says that Satan comes along and tempts him, and he says to him, turn these stones into bread. You're hungry. You've been out here 40 days, and, and Jesus turns around and says, well, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, which is the bread of life, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth, mouth of God. Then he turns around and says, well, you say you're God, and, and, and God is there to help you. Why don't you just toss yourself over the temple at the highest point. And it is, it is Satan who says to him, you know what the Bible says, that, 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 that God will send thousands of angels at your beckoning call, call just to make sure you don't even hit the bottom of the ground. In other words, Jesus has, he is the Lord of hosts. Heaven is filled with all of his if you will, hostly being. He is our general. He is in charge of the army of God. And this God of battle who is empowering us so that we not only fight, but that we fight to the end, but not only fight to the end. I wish I had some winners in the house. But that he also fight, he also help us fight to win. Have I got a witness in the house? We can win over our families. We can win over bad health. We can win over uh, uh, cases in the hospital. We can win over sin. We can win against our enemy. We can win in this nation. We can win in our situation. We can win over our relationship. We can win in our monies. We can win in our houses. We can win in our businesses, but we got to we got to know that we have a God who sits high and looks low and guides our feet wherever we go so that we can what? Win. I don't know about you, but I want to be a winner in life. I don't want to be a loser in life. That's why I fought this pandemic for two years. I told Satan in the name of Jesus, stay away from my family. In the name of Jesus, stay away from my church. In the name of Jesus, stay away from my relationships. In the name of Jesus, stay away from my grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, stay, stay away from my schools and, and all of those kinds. Stay out of my community because I'm here to win. Say here to win. Now let me be quick here. In order to win, you have to understand you cannot win with those seven minute last Last of the day prayers. 
Can I say it again? You cannot win with those seven last minutes of the day where you carve out of your busy schedule a mere seven minutes at the end of the day, right before you go to sleep, you're tired, you're exhausted, uh, you want some healing, you want some refreshing, and so what do we do? At the last seven minutes before we go to bed, when we go to bed, we start to talk to God and give him those seven last minutes out of the day. But I need to tell you that Paul's right. Brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is, after all, your reasonable... Can I say it again? It's your reasonable what? It is your reasonable what? It's your reasonable what? I wish that somebody would know that text. It is your reasonable service. And what Paul is saying is this, that you are not to give him a hit and miss prayer. You are not to give him that two minute prayer. And then when you go to eat dinner, you are not to give him the same prayer you've been giving him as you were a kid, when you was a kid. Have I got two, have I got two witnesses? Thank you, Lord, for the food that is on the, on the, uh, and then you gone. No, no, he says, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present yourself, that you've got to talk to God every time. You've got to make it a habit. When you wake up in the morning, you've got to say, God, I thank you for this new day. Well, it looks awful snowy out there. You, are, you have to be able to say, God, I thank you for the snow. And when it's sunshine, you ought to be able to say, God, I thank you for the sunshine. When it's raining, you ought to say, God, if it didn't rain, we wouldn't have any greeneries around here. You've got to thank him for sunny days and cloudy days. You've got to thank him for the health that he's given you you may not be in the best shape but thank God you ain't dead right now have I got a witness in the house you've got to learn how to thank him for all the food in the house but don't just thank him for the food in the house it had to be preserved by a refrigerator so you ought to thank him God I don't thank you for the food but the food ain't no good unless it's refrigerated so you start to thanking him for the refrigeration and then you tell God God the food ain't no good unless it's able to go into a stove to be warmed up and cooking you ought to say God God, I thank you for the stove. And then you ought to turn around, look at your table and say, God, I wouldn't have anywhere to eat if I didn't have a table. So I want to thank you for the table. And then turn around and say, God, I see the chairs up under the table. I want to thank you for the chairs. And then you ought to look over into your living room or your great room and say, God, I want to thank you for the couch. And now I can sit back, relax, and look at TV. You ought to thank him for everything. Look around your house. See your spouse and say, Lord, I thank you that my spouse is yet in the land of the living. Then look around around at your children and say God I thank you for my children they yet in the land of the living thank you God for my grandchildren just keep on praising him keep on praying to him don't give him just a minute but 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 but, but every day that you wake up give him a thanks stop in the afternoon give him a thanks in the evening time thank him you've got to live off of prayer you've got to breathe off of prayer because I stopped by to tell you that there's power in prayer have I got a witness in the house there's power in pray and when you pray right everything will be all right so you have to give him prayer prayer the Bible said that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous not anybody's prayer but the prayer of the righteous those who are right with God ultimately will be right with folk those who have the vertical rightness from there from here to heaven will ultimately have the humanity's rightness right also there's much much power when there's much prayer no power when there is no prayer but when the praises go up in prayer the blessings will come down and you'll find yourself a winner turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you can be a winner today yes you can be a winner but you cannot be a winner unless you know the winning rules and the winning rules is the Bible turn to your neighbor and say the Bible basic information before leaving earth B-I-B-L-E basic information before leaving earth did y'all hear that did y'all write that down the Bible is the greatest book 
that history will ever have in its possession. All other books will become outdated, but the Word of God will last forever. It is what we call God breathed. It was given by men, but God breathed the words in it. It is, it is spiritually dictated and divinely inspired by God. Now write this down. It is the portion of the mind of God on paper. I got happy there myself. It is a portion of the mind of God on paper about what he thinks and how he thinks. And the Bible declares God to be omniscient. Say omniscient. Which means that he knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And he knows the beginning from the end. The old folk used to say that he is Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. And if you want to know what God thinks, all you have to do is read the Bible because it is a portion of the mind of God on paper. As someone said, the Bible is bread for the hungry. Not only those who are physically hungry, but those who are spiritually hungry, but also those who are lonely. If you want to get past loneliness, just start to read the word of God. It's a light for those in darkness, healing for those who are wounded, strength for those who are weak, and direction for those who are lost. It even gives purpose to people who do not have a purposeful life because that is the word of God. Now watch this. It is the constitution, the constitution of the kingdom of God. In other words, it constitutes what the kingdom of God is like. And so the entire 66 books is the constitution how we're supposed to constitute our world, how we're so to constitute our lives, how we're supposed to constitute our family, how we're supposed to constitute our community. It's, it's how we constitute certain kinds of things that are around us. And so it is the constitution of the kingdom of God on earth, which makes it a roadmap to victory to every Christian. And I wish I had a witness in the house. It, it is live principles and live practices and live precepts. So if you want to know how to become victorious, all you have to do is go to the constitution of the kingdom of God on earth. You, you know, you had the U.S. Constitution, 1987, to which the great uh, forebearers and writer of the Constitution said, here is how we're going to constitute the United States of America. Here's what we're going to believe about that nation. Here is God's constitution for the kingdom on earth. And so therefore, a crucial key to victory in your destination is to feed your soul on the Constitution or God's daily word. Because when you do that, your life is about to change. When you start reading the Word of God, it'll tell you that it's a lamp to light up your pathway. When you read the Word of God, it'll tell you that you're no failure because you can do all things through Christ. That strengthens you. When you read the Constitution, it'll tell you that uh, God exalts a nation. When you read the Constitution, it'll tell you that you've got to learn some things first. You've got to learn how to be humble first. You've got to learn how uh, to be humble, how to abase, and how to abound. It, it, it's filled with all kinds of good things. When you, when you lost your way, it'll tell you that you have not really lost your way because there's always somebody who is in front of you, says the 23rd Psalm. 
the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still water. Uh, he leadeth me beside the still water. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm still victorious because, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear for God is with me. He tells you that when you put the Lord in front of you, then all of a sudden you find that God puts something behind you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And he tells you that you're never homeless for I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? I wish I could preach this thing. How long? How long? Forever and ever. When, when this old earthly body is dissolved, it, it tells me that I've got another building not made by hand, but eternal into heaven, which means that I'm going to be all right even in the midst of the darkness of death. It tells me that one Friday evening, Jesus began to deal with this thing called death and he goes to the cross to be crucified on the cross but it tells me that he dies on Friday evening he lays in the grave all all evening Friday and all day Saturday but early Sunday morning he got up and defeated death even how did he defeat it he gave his life to defeat death itself it is my marching orders. Come on, stand on your feet. Marching orders is the word of God. Over and over, it talks about fighting to the end, which is good, but fighting to win. That's right. The marching orders, God's word over you. You get an encounter with Jesus Christ and some wonderful things happen. You'll see that in sin, he is a savior. In darkness, he is light. In confusion, he is direction. In bondage, he is a liberator. In sickness, he is a physician. In times of hurt, he is a healer. In loneliness, he is steadfast. In weakness, he is our strength. In death, he is our life. And there is victory in Jesus Christ. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God even now, just tell God how grateful you are for making you a winner. The Bible said that we're not just mere conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Through Christ who gave himself for us. Who's going to win? You're going to win. Every day for the last two years you've been waking up winning. Every night that you've gone to sleep, you had a day of winning. You still have your family. That makes you a winner. You have friends still. That makes you a winner. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. You have to make it up in your mind that you're going to follow Jesus. You've got to make it up in your mind that you're going to be a disciple of him. You do not have as many days in front of you as you may think you have. You have less days in front of you than you have behind you. And you need to live those latter days out as a conqueror and a victor. The songwriter says that this life is filled with swift transitions. You're up today, you're down tomorrow, but when you are in Christ being down, you still can be a victor in Jesus. Give God some praise right there because you've been there. You know God has been with you, but you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. My spirit is telling me that there are some people in this church who felt a conviction. And the Holy Spirit has convicted you to give yourself to the Lord. If you're here today and you felt that conviction, just lift up your hand as every head is bowed. The choir is not looking at you. No one's looking at you. If you're here today and you felt that conviction of the Holy Spirit in the service that you want to do better, you're going to do better. You're going to make shifts. I see a few hands that are up. Praise God. If you're in the car, just turn your lights on. It means that you want, you felt that conviction. If you're on TV there, it means that you felt that conviction. 
you're here in the house and you feel a conviction to follow Jesus in a strong way, the Bible says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart, even to those kinds of convictions. If you're here this morning, if you've never been baptized in water, would you be honest with me? That's a way of saying I'm convicted to follow Jesus because I'm baptized in water. If you've not been baptized in water, will you lift up your hand? If you've not been baptized in water, lift your hand up. I'm not going to call you out. I won't embarrass you or anything like that. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, you're not a member of Mount Zion Church or you don't have a church home or you're looking for a new church, would you lift your hand up today? Praise God. Praise God. There's a few folk. Here's what I need you to do is there's a card in your pew rack. Don't leave out without fulfilling what God is trying to tell you to do. Give your life to him. Unite with the Mount Zion family. Start all over again. Don't leave out the church without doing that. Fill that card out and we'll get right back with you. Tell you what your next steps are. Drop them off in the uh, late offering box that are at uh, the outside door. Just put those cards in there and we'll get right back with you. As you bow your heads, we want you also to pray for two particular members of our church. We want you to pray for Brother James Patterson. His wife, Barbara, passed on last week, or this week rather. And so there will be a viewing at the St. Mary Catholic Church. Viewing at the, Catholic, at the St. Mary Catholic Church right around the corner from here. Uh, I don't have the time for that. So we're praying for James Patterson and his family. We're also praying for Phil Stevens. He's now a new councilman in the Bedford Heights area, a member of our church. He lost his mother last week. One funeral will be on, I believe, Wednesday, another one on Thursday. We'll make sure that you get that information out by way of email. Pray for them right now. Pray for them right now. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the marvelous work that you do here at the Mount Zion Church. We thank you. For these two brothers who have been with us and their family, we ask that you will bless them, that you will put your arms protection around them, that you will keep them even in the midst of their valley, reminding them that you are in front of them and you're going to put goodness and mercy behind them. God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will be with us as we continue our journey. Remind us that we are more than conquerors, that we're called not to just finish well by finishing the fight, but we also called to win the battles and the warfare that are placed before us. Help us to walk in that consecration, that anointing, and that way. And we're believing that here at the Mount Zion Church that you're going to give us even more victories in 2022. You told us the first Sunday that there would be a shift in what was going on with this pandemic. And we're now seeing that shift occur across the nation. Now, God, let us see more shifts, more victories. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for this choir, the musicians, and all of those who have been with us in the worship experience. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and just wave at him. Just wave at him in front of you, in back of you. As you're away saying, glad to see you. Consider yourself dismissed. And uh, we'll see you around the TV. Amen. 6.30. God bless.